Hello everyone, welcome back to the second episode of the Switch Upgrade Project series. And this episode is about the preparation phase for this project. So before we set up and configure the switches, we are gonna prepare the configuration file first, the template that we're gonna use for deploying all the switches. And I'm also gonna show you everything that came in our order when our switches were delivered. And I'm gonna show you how our configuration file template was built and what commands we used and also the purpose of those commands. So if you are interested to see our configuration file, what our switch command looks like, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started. So in this video, I won't be showing how we purchase our switches, what the budgeting is because I'm not involved in that. I will just show you the steps after our order was delivered. So once our order was delivered, I did an inventory to check if we received everything that we ordered. This is also the time to collect the serial number and model number of the devices so I can enter them in our system and they can usually be found in the packing list. So for our switches, we ordered the Cisco Catalyst 9300 switches. We ordered the 48 ports and 24 ports and they all came in big pallets like this. So aside from the switches, we also ordered some SFP. These are the connectors that we're going to use for our uplinks to connect our fiber cables to the router. So we got a multi-mode SFP and it's usually color-coded for Cisco. This one is in light pink and we're going to use multi-mode fiber for our uplinks. And we also received a switch network module and this is a modular component and it also plugs into a network switch chassis. So we can use this if we want additional ports or bandwidth or more features to the switch. And lastly, we got some stacking cables. We can use this if we want to stack two or more switches so they can behave as one single unit. So the next part of our preparation phase is to build our configuration file so we would know what switch commands we're going to use to set up our new switches. So this is case-to-case -case basis, but in our case at work, we have a network engineering team that builds like 80% of our configuration file because there are so many switch commands that is used to deploy production switches. And in reality, it's not just like our home labs or what we learn from school where we set up VLANs and hostname, IP address, and that's it for the switches. There's a lot of commands and configuration that goes into actual switches in real world that is beyond my experience, but I'm gonna show you what kind of commands we're gonna use. And a lot of them is for security hardening so we can keep our production switches secure. Also, I have a separate video for our switch configuration file where I'll be explaining all the commands line by line in more details if you're interested. Okay, so let's start with the basic switch configuration. And this one is for setting up the host name of the switch for easier identification, of course. And the naming convention depends on the company, but would typically include the location where the switch is going to be racked. So it's easier for us to know where the switch is located just by seeing its name. Then we use this command to define the domain name used for our SSH key generation and host name resolution. Then these next commands is for enabling SSH access. SSH is best practice to secure our remote access to our network devices, so don't use Telnet when you're setting up your switch. Then the next command is to assign an IP address and subnet mask to the interface. So this is what we do under the interface VLAN or the physical interface. Then this command is for applying an access control list that's named DOS to incoming traffic on this interface. This is to prevent denial of service attacks. We also have commands for disabling unnecessary IP services and this is an important security hardening practice in network devices. So best practice in device configuration is if you're not using the features or services, it's better to disable them. Next, we have commands to set up time synchronization. So this adds NTP servers to our switch to synchronize the switch's clock. Then we have commands for DNS settings. The no IP name server command clears any previous DNS server settings. 
the IP name server server IP address command specifies a DNS server to resolve the domain names. And we can also add a backup DNS server using the same command. Another important security hardening command is the banner for login. This command sets a login message and users will see this warning before logging in. The next command is to disable WSMA and that stands for Web Services Management Agent. So that is a Cisco feature that allows external management system to interact with Cisco devices using web-based APIs. So that is really useful in environments that integrate with management tools, but if unused, it can be a potential attack surface. So since we don't use these management tools at work, we are just disabling them. So we have more commands for security hardening, more for IP and web services. So these commands disable source routing, the HTTP and HTTPS web-based management interfaces, and HTTP-based local authentication. Then we have commands for syslog logging configuration. We use this command to configure logging. So there are different ways to handle log messages and different levels, like it controls what level of log messages are sent to the syslog servers. Then we have the VTY line configuration for remote access. We configure the VTY lines or the virtual terminal lines on a network device so we can access the device and manage them remotely. Then there's also the command to set the default gateway for the switch. So this allows management traffic to leave the local subnet. We also use commands for spanning tree and loop protection. So these are the commands to enable BPDU guard on all port pass ports and to enable loop guard globally. We also have commands for management services and this enables secure copy protocol and also enables LLDP. Then we also use commands to configure SNMP. This sets the physical location of the device in SNMP and this sets the chassis ID or the serial number for SNMP inventory tracking. And also we have a lot of commands for access list and these are specifically for voice over IP or network. So these extended access list allow UDP traffic in specific port ranges used by voice over IP and other telecommunications. We also use commands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. These commands enable AAA framework and also creates a TACX Plus server group. And lastly, these are the commands that we are most familiar with. This is the VLAN configuration. And these are the commands to create VLANs and assigns their respective descriptive names. And also let's not forget the trunk port configuration. This sets the port to trunk mode and also configure other settings like traffic statistics, refresh rate, and quality of service policy. If you have trunk port configuration, there's also the access port configuration. And these commands assign the ports to VLAN 2, also sets VLAN 500 for voice traffic, and disables log messages and enables port fast. Okay, so that's it for what our switch configuration file looks like. Okay, so I'm going to show you another part of the preparation where I prepared a spreadsheet for the current switches that we are going to replace. So it'll be easier later on to determine what kind of switches we're going to use to replace the current switch. So if you look into our sheet in here, I've listed the current switch name, the port usage, so we would know how many ports it's currently using, how many chassis will be assigned to that particular switch, for example, switch 01, and what model we have ordered to replace this. So for this model, you can tell what how many ports it needs in the model number. If it says 48 in here, that's 48 ports, and the 24 in here is for the 24 ports. Okay, so for example, we have switches that uses more than one chassis in here because they have many ports. Let's go for the switch 03, for example. So this is currently using 68 ports and currently has three chassis. So we can easily tell how many new switches we are going to assign this 
switch 03 because we have this spreadsheet so i marked this as needing two 48 port switches to accommodate the 68 ports that we need for this and also allow for scalability for future proofing so i think it's really important to really prepare and have all the information that you need so it will be easier for you to deploy and know how many switches you're gonna need to set up for a particular switch how many chassis you would need what kind of switch is it 48 port or 24 port so having a list or a spreadsheet helps a lot with this and also i've marked those that are gonna need some stacking cables so at least we are prepared and we have covered how many stacking cables we're gonna need for example this one needs two blades so we are gonna need two stacking cables for this this one is gonna need 448 port blade so it's gonna need like three 50 centimeter stacking cable and a shorter stacking cable so it's more organized that way at least you would know all of the devices and peripherals that you're gonna need okay so that would be it for the preparation phase of the switch upgrade project the next episode is gonna be setting up the 9300 switch with our configuration file and i'm gonna show it to you from scratch on how we set it up and make sure that it has all of the commands that it needs so if you're interested please stay tuned for that video and if you have any questions please feel free to ask and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching